ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षा पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम हरि ओ श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ my pranams to all atma jyotis divine light of the self i welcome all of you to today's session of yoga vasishta i am a student i am not a pandita i am not a jnani i am not a guru i am conducting this study hour studying this yoga vasishta so that i learn and i am making some notes and i am making that notes available to you i am reading a book on yoga vasishta published by ramakrishna mat and some other books also and this is in telugu language and after reading it i am making notes some notes in, and i am talking in english if there are any mistakes in my explanation please forgive me mistakes are mine so sage vasishta and shri rama were talking we have completed in mumukshu vyavahara prakarana 12 chapters we have completed now we have come to chapter number 13 in this chapter sage vasishta is talking about question and answer how to question when you go to a guru what is the attitude you should have you should ask your doubts what you should ask in a respectful manner and how to get the answer how to understand the answer i mean who is a good student who is a uh, teacher all this are explained in this chapter so sage vasishta is saying o oh rama if a person doesn't have wisdom and that person does not have deep understanding about self knowledge what is the use of questioning such a person about atma about self similarly if you know that a person is having wisdom is self realized he knows self knowledge if you know such a person if you don't ask him questions that is also of no use if you don't listen to what a self realized master is saying and you are only big being adamantly argumentative there is no point the person who asks question prashna is called pruchaka in sanskrit so sage vasishta is talking about the qualities of how to ask questions what are the qualities of a good questioner before we ask a question we should have a good understanding about the teacher's capabilities i mean the teacher knows this subject so i can ask him on this subject this understanding we should have we should also as a student we should also know what how to frame a question so that 
we get maximum benefit from the answer. Also, the questioner should be a seeker of truth. He should be asking a question to know the truth as a seeker, as an inquis inquisitive person, as a positive way, not in a negative way that to prove the teacher wrong with adamant argumentation, to prove that that person does not know anything, should not ask questions like that. If we think that the teacher does not know, then we better not question him rather than argument and uh, waste time with empty arguments. It is our own faults which will make us see the faults in the other persons also. And if you ask someone who is not a wise person, who does not have subject knowledge, and he gives some incorrect answer. Based on that, you form an opinion saying that Atma Jnana is useless. That person, that kind of student is an ignorant student. And similarly, the person who answers is the teacher. Should be able to understand the capability of the student. What is the background of the student? What are all the things the student already knows? What are the defects in his mind? I mean, what is the intention of the student in asking this question? How do I frame the answer with relevant examples so that the questioner will be set on the path of truth? What is the concentration power of the student? Can he understand the subtle truth of Atma Jnana? Teacher has to see all these things and then he has to answer appropriately to the student. If a student is of inferior quality, meaning he is attracted to the worldly pleasures and having an animal instinct, then it is better not to instruct him on the Atma Jnana. Because it is like blowing a conch in the ear of a deaf person. Moreover, the truth will confuse him. But you, O Rama, as Sattvika Vairagya, you are full of good qualities. You are full of dispassion. You are asking the question. And myself, who is Sage Vasishta, I am appointed by Brahmaji to do the teaching to the qualified students about Atma Jnana. I teach for the welfare of the world. So now, there is a unique combination of a qualified student in you and a qualified teacher in me. Therefore, our dialogue will be very relevant in removing the confusion of many people. O Rama, O Raghava, you have a sharp intellect and you are well trained in understanding the meanings of the words. When I speak something, Sage Vasishta is saying, when I speak something, have faith 
that whatever I am speaking is coming out of my own experience. It is, it is a scriptural knowledge corroborated by my own experience. Have faith, have respect. Because we have spent years and years together in learning, practicing, discussing with the other rishis and contemplating, meditating. We have spent years and years together. After that, we came to a conclusion that this is the truth. And that truth I am going to tell you. Therefore, you have faith on my words. Because if you go to a doctor and doctor prescribes a medicine and you say doctor is not well read, is not educated, then the medicine will not work for you. O oh, Rama, you have a great intellect and you have Sattvika Vairagya. Out of your own contemplation, you have understood the suffering in the world. You have a complete picture of the problems of the life. Disease, death, old age. You have a complete picture. I am privileged to get a student like you. Therefore, I think that my teaching will easily enter into your heart. So whatever you spoke till yesterday, we have listened to that. And all the sages decided that your intellect has concentration, capability, and enough dispassion so that we decided that you are qualified to get Atma Jnana. May this teaching be understood by you easily. So put effort, be focused, concentrate and listen to what I am saying. And after carefully listening to what I am saying, you decide what you want to do. You are free to do whatever you want to do. In some cases, you can ask questions, but your questions should be to clarify your doubts and to acquire self-knowledge, Atma Jnana. May you not ask wasteful questions that waste time. I am saying this because mind is a monkey. There is no control of the mind. So, don't let your mind run amok and ask useless questions. This monkey mind is roaming in the forest of samsara, purify the mind and otherwise worldly attractions will pull it and it will drag it down to worldly pleasures. 
therefore there is a danger of your mind being attracted to worldly pleasures and your questions being centered around world therefore put effort focus concentrate and let your may your questions be about the supreme truth may you ask questions about supreme truth oh people listen to our dialogue prepare yourself focus into this atma vicharana because of ignorance every moment the world pulls you you may think that you understood and you are free of the world but it is not so the world pulls you every moment so every moment there is a samsarga it's a, it's an attraction it's an attachment to the world we can that samsarga those who want to uplift themselves spiritually they should search for sages and saints sadhus recognize a true sadhu and have a debate with them discuss with them discourse listen to their discourses then you will know what is truth and what is untruth what is false you will know clearly be a seeker practice spiritual practices and seek the company of spiritual masters then in their company listening to their discourses the sun of atma jnana will rise in your intellect and the tree of discrimination tree of right thinking will sprout in that intellect and the fruits of that tree of that right thinking are very tasty and those fruits are called moksha with this chapter number 13 is over now we are entering into chapter number 14 the method the technique to attain moksha liberation so vasishta is saying o oh rama moksha liberation salvation is if you think of it as a king of kings if you want to have darshana of that king an audience with the king of moksha you have to please four door keepers there are four door keepers to the palace of moksha they are shama shama means inner calmness meaning the mind has to be made calmer vicharana second is vicharana enquiry you should have a sharp intellect and you should question and you should analyze and you should do self enquiry and then you should have santosha contentment whatever we get we should be happy with that we should not be hankering after more money 
more pleasures and all. Be happy with what you have. Be content. And fourth one, most important, is, is Sadhu Satsanga. Company of holy people. Company of sadhus, saints, sages. So what are the four gatekeepers for moksha? Shama. Make your mind calm and peaceful. Vicharana. Use your sharp intellect to analyze the truths of life. Santosha. Contentment. Whatever you have, be content with that. Don't hanker after worldly pleasures. Sadhu sang Sangha. Company of holy people. These are the four doorkeepers to moksha. And these four one should practice and cultivate and accumulate these treasures in their life. If you think I cannot practice all the four, at least practice three, if not two, then those doorkeepers will open the door for you. If you cannot please one, two doorkeepers, at least please one doorkeeper. And think that that doorkeeper is your friend. And if you please one doorkeeper, the other three doorkeepers also become pleased and become your friends. Who are the four doorkeepers? Shama. Do meditation and calm down your mind. Vicharana. Do enquiry. Use your sharp intellect and enquire into the reality of this world and enquire into the nature of the world, nature of the body, nature of the mind. Enquire. Nature of Atman. Enquire. Santosha. Be content with what you have. Don't put extra effort to gain something which will anyway be taken away from you after your death. Sadhu Sangha, company of wise people, company of sages, company of saints. If you have any one of these doorkeepers befriended, other doorkeepers also become your friends and the doors will be opened. Scriptures, wisdom, austerities, tapas, shrutis, the scriptures which are the Upanishads and Vedas. And an intelligent person is qualified for this. And such an intelligent person, discriminative person, is known as a great noble soul. Water becomes cold and ice because of the coldness. Lack of effort, similarly, lack of effort will make the mind cold and like a stone. One should have a sharp intellect and sharpen the mind. Because of this jadatva, because you have not thought enough, you have not put enough thought into your intellect. You think that I am this body, I have hands, I have legs, I have head, I am this body that is. And if the body is diseased, you think I am diseased like that. If body is happy, you think I am happy. This is all ignorance. Therefore, if one does not think enough, contemplate enough, 
they will fall into this ignorance and say that I am this body. Oh Rama, you have great qualities, kindness, compassion, all good qualities you have and you have discriminative capacity, dispassion. Listen to what I am going to say with enthusiasm and you will definitely be able to grasp the subtle truth. Whatever it is, don't stop your spiritual practices like meditation, bhakti, yoga, vairagya. Don't stop them. Don't leave them. With their help, with vairagya, bhakti, meditation, with their help, your intellect becomes stronger. First you determine, take a firm conviction that I want to get out of this samsara. Be in the company of holy people and read scriptures, listen to the discourses of the holy people and also use your own intellect in analyzing them, then definitely your wisdom will increase. O oh, people, listen to this holy dialogue between Vasishta and Rama. Don't say, uh, these are all we don't want to study. Don't be like an ignorant fool. Look at the great tree of samsara. There is no end to samsara. Lifespan is decreasing day by day. Therefore, arise, awake and try to learn Atma Jnana. This samsara deceives the ignorant people. Therefore, to get rid of ignorance, effort is required. There are three poisonous snakes called laziness, <coughs> craving, and <coughs> not thinking. These three poisonous snakes <coughs> are poisoning the life. They are limiting the heart of the people. They are poisoning the heart of the people. And people are just ignorantly ignoring them. In the wise people, you find a serenity. All this serenity they got because of right thinking, contemplation and vicharana, self-enquiry and a perception based on Atma Jnana.
those wise people are fit to be called purusha therefore oh people all of you take recourse to your pure intellect get rid of your tamo guna with this this chapter has come to an end हरिओं तत्सत श्री कृष्णार्पण